As I sit here sipping bathroom tap water from a cracked coffee cup staring into the eternal sparkle of deep space I reflect on my greatest and most costly mistakes, billions of credits, with lifetimes of interest, an incalculable wealth, housed in a secure pocket dimension vault back home, the most advanced pioneer vessel built to date, or at least it was when we launched, for naught, my own fault of course, these weeks and months past have provided if nothing else, some valuable time to reflect upon my mistake, time to dwell and analyze and daydream about what may have been, 600,000 people, a complete genetic sample of humankind, a ship one quarter the mass of Earth's moon, a man-made asteroid, harnessing the ebbs and flows of cosmic string migration to steer its impossibly fast plunge into the abyss, computer systems of unfathomable intelligence, long since abandoning human interference in their design developing and evolving themselves for countless generations and iterations, magic it would seem, Darwinian hyperdrives they were called, promises of super intelligent entities upon arrival, guiding and assisting our civilizations on the new world more than three million years later, such grand designs, such aspirations, so much time and money, just so much work all undone by a sad little megalomaniac and a cup of coffee, it wasn't even a great coffee, a loud scraping sound on the other side of the grave metal door roused me from my reflection, the ecosystem in the kitchen had gone from dangerous to worse this past week, perhaps in line with some sort of breeding season, it was fascinating really, in a vastly different situation I may have devoted a lifetime of study to the phenomenon, the jungle ship of which I was the creator, a god at the whims of his realm, what a load of shit, but it sounds better than the two what who wrote but did not follow the rules, hours before launch all 600,000 souls were locked down and in deep sleep, frozen in time safety for hypersleep capsules, my only outsourced item, essentially halfway between here and a custom pocket dimension, frozen in time or at least extremely slowed down, from the slumbering crew's perspective three million earth years were to pass like a camera flash, if only I had locked myself down with them, if only I had resisted the urge for one lavish stroll down the impossibly long corridors ranked with pod after pod of humanity, my humanity as I thought of them, embarrassingly self-centered as I was, coffee in hand, everything locked down and sanitized, not a microbe out of place for our long journey, one last quick cup of joe before I too retired to my private chamber, my hypersleep deluxe designed to improve and align my cognitive faculties during the transfer from normal time to the D4 alignment, it was a pseudoscience I'm sure but it did result in a refreshed feeling upon emergence and I was conceded enough to spend the millions on the upgrade, the kitchen facility was white and bright and extremely sterile, all our supplies D4 stored, enough to sustain my humanity for several years until our first crops provided yield, all these majestic goals were over a million years away, and as far as I could tell I was the only remaining living soul aboard, unless you count the terrifying jungle creatures, and in fact the jungle itself that had developed from my careless ring of coffee, sugar and milk, the cup and saucer went into the sanitizer, the milk and remaining sugar and coffee grounds properly disposed of in the deep space disposal port, all I missed was the damn ring, the damn spot where I briefly rested my cup in the sink before disposing of it, that spot I carelessly washed away with a tap, that sugar and milk residue mixing with no more than two cups of water in the drain, the cradle of life that motherfucking drain became, mold developed, turning presumably into something like algae, primordial stuff apparently, now here we are nearly two million years later, the ship is filled with life, moss and vines and scurrying things just out of sight, larger stalking creatures, carnivorous plants and reptile-like carnivores, hallways so filled with flora they were just blocked ports leading to sections of the ship filled solid with grey-green biomass, my private body in its secure room had saved me from the fate of the rest of my people, their power switched off by persons or creatures or circumstances unknown millennia ago, their bodies presumably devoured and added to the evolutionary process of decomposition and development that had created this magical and terrifying new terrain, my pod had presumably awoken me in error, 
our magical supercomputer compromised by life saturating every space and panel and circuit aboard. The scraping became more insistent, and I blinked and looked away from the hypnotic spacescape. Back across the vast dining area to the offending port the scraping paused briefly, sending a shiver up my spine. It's like whatever a toothy abomination was attempting to claw through the six inch steel door is aware not only of my presence but that I had looked towards the door. Time to move on. Remaining in one place too long was a death sentence here. Stowing my cup and slinging my modified rifle over my shoulder I took one last look out the window. It may be some time before I saw stars again. The scraping turned into a loud thud. Something was throwing its weight on the door. It was then that I spotted the object. There was something out there. Through the window. Something where there should be nothing. The deepy streets of space. Far between galaxies. Something either very small or very far. Something reflective. Behind me the thuds intensified and the musical jangling of some tiny part of the heavy door singe bouncing across the tiled floor and through the air. I squinted desperately toward the object. Was it getting larger? Approaching? The door isn't holding. I tear myself away and dart down the dining hall toward the closest DNGN tube. The only part of the ship remaining sealed and sterile when I woke. My transit network and only relatively safe space. As I seal the hatch behind me I hear the boom of the kitchen hitting the floor and the frustrated squeal of whatever dark slippery creature emerged through the port. I hear you big fella I thought, I was hoping to find a meal in there too. I slid down the DNG and towards the junction that I was currently using for sleep with empty pockets and a belly empty but for water. Pretty soon my single can of chickpeas would be depleted and I would need to either locate another food storage locker. They were focal points for my new shipmates. Perhaps some crew had awakened before me and the genetic memory of that prey remained with the vines and teeth and claws, or begin to experiment with consuming some of the strange leaves and seeds adorning the walls. My mind was racing with the possibilities of what that object briefly spotted through the mess hall window could be. Was it natural? Man-made? Made by an alien hand? Did it contain intelligent life? People. Was I being rescued or salvaged or studied or destroyed? All this irresistible excitement was resisted, pushed to the back burner. Good lord even my metaphors were dwelling on my most persistent and insistent concern. Hunger. Chickpeas it is I suppose I laughed to myself, and sure if I thought it or spoke it aloud, the hunger was playing tricks like that. My can was less than a quarter full, possibly my only food for light years that I was sure I could eat. Down the hatch, carpe diem, and now I had nothing. What the fuck was that object?